Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is, what is today? It's Thursday, August 17th, 4.45 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. Stormy again, just like the markets for the third day in a row. State of the market, mild correction. Well, mild correction for the S&P 500. Leaders smacked today. Check the trend gauge over here. We went to leaders flashing bearish downtrend last week. Yesterday, we went to uh, short term, all five of the major indexes. The Dow joined the other four below their 21 day, went to bearish there. Today, the Dow joined the other four indexes below the 50 day moving average on its first close below, still neutral, but the red sub arrow. Hope we don't close the week there, but if we do, we do. We just report the facts here at Revere. Not what you want to hear necessarily, but what you need to hear long term on the plus side. If we are looking for a silver lining, all five of the major indexes still above the 200 day moving average. Remember one of our mantras, the market does not get into serious trouble unless we break below the 200 day moving average on the indexes. It's another reason why we're just putting this in the proper context of a mild correction. Dow or the S&P now 5.2% off of its recent high. That doesn't sound so bad, but if you look at the charts of some of the uh, leaders, it's very clearly a lot worse. So what happened today? I mentioned yesterday, where's the bounce? Well, no buyers equals no bounce. Look like we might have caught uh, a bottom. I'll show you that on a short term chart. Uh, late morning, early afternoon, but no, we just broke that level that I was watching and continued lower uh, for the duration of the afternoon, minor bounce late, leader smacked, Dow broke the 50 day, not a lot of good news to report. Our eight growth ETF composite, the RG8 down 1.55%. This is confirming the uh, devastation in the growth area something we instituted back in uh mid 2021 after uh, a stealth stealth bear market in leading stocks uh the hangover starting from the big 2020 gains post covid s p 500 down eight tenths nasdaq 100 continues to underperform down 1.1 dow down 0.8 Mid caps down 1.3, Russell 2000 small caps down 1.2, Global 6040 down 0.45, uh, stocks down 0.66, Global bonds down 0.15, 6040, that's your number. In-house protection down 0.52%, our reduced beta uh, limiting the losses. But we did take our hedge off today. As I mentioned, I thought we might have had uh, a good spot for a, a low risk partici participation in the bounce to the upside, not so much. We'll take a look at the portfolio changes when we get to the tail of the tape and the charts. Let's get right into them. Here's the S&P 500. You can see very clearly lower low, third close below the 50 day moving average, very oversold. Let's go to the five minute chart and I'll show you what I was looking at. Uh, three times, uh, we uh, tried to pull back and break below this 4397 level and kept bouncing and we were seeing relative strength come in in the big seven names we got the pop we were looking for we got the pullback to test it which held which we were looking for we got an attempt at a new high which failed that's at that 4413 level uh, after this this was the spot here uh, where we took off our hedge uh thinking thinking a couple of things we're oversold on every time frame uh we hit a level where it uh, right below 4400 which had been providing support and unable to break down further got back above 4400 tested it attempted to uh, rally again off of it but no sir the market said not today rolled over trend down all the way down to 4365 ish little bit of a bounce after three o'clock, then a fade into the close. Uh, bottom line is the market just not at this point ready to uh, capitulate. And we also 
uh, have the fact that rates are making higher highs. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100. This was that area where we were putting in uh, some relative strength, in fact, making a higher high on that rebound that I mentioned. Uh, but again, just like the S&P 500 fading into the close. Let's go to a daily chart on this. Uh, now, 3.1% below the 50-day moving average, 13%, uh, that's a lot, above the 200-day moving average. We're going to talk about a spot on the S&P 500 where it would make reasonable sense to start putting up a fight considering how uh, oversold we are. I'll do that after I finish these, uh, the, um, the inter-asset correlation charts and the indexes. Here's your Dow. Failed breakout now above that 34.6 level. First close below the 50-day moving average. Mid caps, that breakout has failed. That 476 breakout failed at that 500 level. Second close below, really probably the third. Uh, yeah, third close below the first one just barely. IWM, failed breakout too. Uh, three very clear closes below the 50-day moving average and all the way down now to within... Uh, half of a percent from its 200-day moving average. Those are the five major indexes. Next up, the VIX is confirming lower lows by making a higher high, up 6.6% today. The dollar not helping. Started out weak, got stronger uh, as the day went along before uh, a little bit of a fade into the close making well it made a higher high not a higher closing high however how did uh, precious metals do gold down 0.15 percent making a lower low silver silver up 1.2 uh, percent but well off the lows gold and silver stocks down eight tenths of a percent making lower lows let's uh, check bitcoin quickly bito uh, down 4%, gap down, the whole is sitting on the 200-day moving average now. This is the Bitcoin futures. Let's flip to bonds now. Continued higher highs in yields, meaning lower lows in prices. Uh, down a tenth of a percent. TLT, down four tenths of a percent. Lower low because higher highs in price. Uh, up 1.17% on the yield of the 30-year, all, going all the to highs all the way back to October of last year. TNX, uh, up 1.17%. Again, matching the highs going back to October of last year. That's your inter-asset correlation. Let's go to the tail of the tape. You can pause this. Uh, stochastics, all very oversold dollar. Uh, at highs, yields near highs. Where's the bounce going to happen? We don't try to predict it. Uh, we do know regre uh, regression back to the mean will happen at some point, but the market uh, thought we might have had a shot at doing it today, but not uh, not so fast. Some news, the Philly Fed index was well above expectations, uh, indicating economic strength. However, 10 and 30 year highest yield since October 2022, as I mentioned. Day count from minus 11 to minus 12, ADMA, uh, 12th day below there, eighth day below, 21 day moving average. Expectations continue to be negative. Um, broke below support levels, the posted support levels here on the SP and the Q. Uh, as far as uh, oh, SPX ATR continues to tick up now at 0.9%. It bottomed below 0.8% uh, as we were rallying. The mildly expanding volatility uh, generally indicates uh, a bearish feature. Uh, UUP and oils, basically the only thing up today. Emerging markets up also. Uh, 10 out of 11 of the sectors down led by a big breakdown in home builders and also in Bitcoin and uh, related names. In-house, we took the hedge off, as I mentioned, looking to catch that bounce, didn't get it. Uh, hit our stops on Amazon and BRT, basically uh, adjusted beta where we started the day, 0.78%. 20% of this coming from our last remaining position, NVIDIA, 
and 80% uh, of it coming from our uh, SSO position. Bottom line, no buyers, no bounce, leaders smacked hard. Dow joins the other four indexes below the 50-day moving average. We've got a lot of interesting charts to look at here today in a minute, and um, we'll review what's left in the portfolio. Let's go ahead and do that and review uh, why we sold what we sold today. NVIDIA holding right there at the 50-day moving average. Uh, Amazon, we stopped out on this when it broke below the 21, rallied back up into the 21 and failed and rolled back over. So we're out of our Amazon position small loss there uh and vrt change of character with a break below the adma which it had been holding uh we've seen too many uh waterfall events in leading stocks to uh put up with anything else on this so uh down to just nvidia and sso in the portfolio let's take a look at uh the best chart holding up in uh, of the big seven we're down to one that's Google, Google going sideways, uh, consolidation, but as it goes sideways, it's showing relative strength. This is a big sign of leadership. Uh, and Google underperformed for a while, but things changed back on its earnings report. It's one of the few stocks that reported earnings uh, gapped up and has for the most part held those gains. Uh, normally when things that are leaders uh, put in a base or sideways movement you show in a healthy market a relative strength line that's declining but google is showing exceptional uh, strength here and this would be at the top of our buy list if the market writes itself the complete opposite end of the spectrum tesla we uh, i posted on twitter today one of the hardest things as a portfolio manager is when you've got a story you believe in it uh, and the fundamentals are there, and price is not matching the fundamentals. The, the change in character in Tesla occurred on this gap down after its earnings, went sideways for a little while, tried to regain the 21-day moving average here, couldn't do it, uh, finally broke the 50-day moving average. This is where we got uh, off of the Tesla train, and it's just continued to bleed lower since then. We still like the story, but we need the price to match our thesis, and uh, it doesn't, that's why we sold. And if you think, I mean, we just don't hold through big downtrends in stocks. We can always buy it back later. Like I said, the last thing we're holding now, NVIDIA. Let's take another look at a stock that everybody loves, Apple. This has done nothing but bleed since it's gapped down uh, below the 50 day moving average on its earnings report, making lower lows now for a while. It held at this key support level around 175.50, broke below it today uh moving on some some other charts that are working amr mike's going to talk about coal stocks tomorrow on the podcast he's got some really interesting stats amr negative reversal uh to close red but look at the relative strength on this over the last five weeks and this is something that really uh energy stocks particularly the commodity energy stocks can zig when the market uh is zagging another one ceix uh, made a higher high, great reaction since its earnings report and um, pulled back along with the market today, but still positive on the day. Very few leaders were. Let's talk about some leaders that certainly weren't. EXTR on the 21 over 21, two massive days down now, totally destroying the chart. SNPS, computer software design, Reported earnings initially gapped up, hard reversal closed at the lows. Uh, in questionable markets, buying strength is not a winner. A stock that has been a winner, but put in a, a massive negative reversal on high volume today, ELF. ELF down 9.4% all the way down to the 50 day moving average. And we believe the home builders put in a top now with this action at XHB. Massive break below the 21 and the 50 day. The other key uh, builder index, ITB, breaking below the 21 and the 50 day. Let's take a look at some of the components of these DHI, DR Horton, big volume break below the 50 day. Toll, another leader, big break below the 50 day. All these are occurring on volume. MTH, Meritage, big break below the 50 day. 
and some of the component stocks, BLDR, big break below the 50-day, floor and decor, this kind of put in uh, a heads up on its, on its gap down in earnings, then a bear flag, and then another breakdown, uh, down 4%, breaking further below the 50-day and this 100 support area. Uh, restoration hardware, uh, breaking not quite below the 50-day, but multiple closes below the 21 now, and certainly a change in character there. And carrier, uh, still holding the 50-day, but a break below the 21. So big change in character and home builder type stocks uh, today. And with that, I'll wrap up today's video. As always, we'd like to hear from you. Email is DonnaRevereAsset.com. My partner, Dan Stewart, if you're interested in becoming, becoming a client, Dan at RevereAsset.com. The phone is 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. We're fond of saying it's not how much you make in the markets. It's how much of that you can keep. We switched over the last couple of weeks from growth or make mode to protect or keep mode as the market has deteriorated, broke uh, key levels, and leading stocks came apart. And if you uh, like the concept of having your downside protected when the market is uh, not at its best, where we consider ourselves expert at identifying that, give us a shout if you're interested. And with that, I will wrap up the video for Thursday, August 17th. This is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset, telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.